Unfiltered. He's Isaac. And he's Philip. We're unfiltered. Uh, Dr. Ken Wilson, welcome back. It's good to be back. Our first repeat guest. First. Ever. Ever. Wow. It's Episode pretty, pretty 20. Honor. Right. Honored. <laughs> Honored. Happy to have you. It's good to be back, man. I love this place. The Heister Camp home. It's great. Love it. We just got done with a pretty big meal. We did. It tired. was epic. Tired. I know. There was food coma kind of setting in. And I think we all looked at each other like, if we're going to do this. It has to be now. Let's do this. <laughs> Got to be now. Yeah. Yeah. Ken was like half asleep in the chair up there. The bread. <laughs> that I was. The steak. Yeah. It <laughs> settled. Well, and thanks for coming down with meal ideas. And you know the sign of a great guest is when you bring food for dinner. Like, you're the guest. You came into my house. I'm supposed to host you, but yet you brought the food. Some, like, just some. It was a little bit. What an amazing ride it's, it's like, been so far. It's like a thank you, and it's like, it's going through the freezer. I'm like, I know what he'd like to try. And <laughs> and you were right, because I have been wanting to try elk for a while, mm-hmm. as I've heard Joe Rogan and Stephen Ranella talk about it. And first time, first time I've ever had elk. Same. It's good. Yeah, it's fun. It's delicious. So thank you. And you're... And then the bread, salmon, and schmear was pretty tasty correct. too, though. Is that something you came up with and like you knew about, or who, uh, where did that I did, come I from? I definitely didn't come up with it. I've just had it multiple times where mm. it's it's usually been smoked salmon or smoked something, yeah. some type of meat. Usually salmon on flavored, uh, not sour cream, cream cheese, and then pita or non bread. Mm. We made do with sour bread. <clears throat> bread. <laughs> Sourdough, oh, bread. A sourdough loaf. It was delicious. Cream cheese, sand. Yeah, that was That's very good. good. So we just turned into a cooking podcast for two minutes, Indeed. but everyone right. should try that. Some kind of bread, cream right. cheese, meat. Very good, very good. So, and I'm very glad you're back because we had another guest on here who was saying about how he enjoyed listening to yours. He was like that guy. He brought it down very well the first time you were on, mm. and so. I mean, I was just glad to have the feedback, for one. But, yeah. like, your first time around was a good time. So we're going to see what we get into this time around as well. Yeah. I mean, I feel like the entire goal with anything, podcast or an actual video, inter- well, I guess this is also video, but um, it's that someone somewhere takes at least one thing and uses it as valuable for their life, whether today or down the road. That's what I want. That was the prayer last time, so I'm stuck with the same prayer this time. Right on. So whether it's him or anyone else. That's all I want. Well, because in especially uh, looking at your bio, because you're a doctor of chiropractic. Mm-hmm. Uh, we graduated together, which we five, did. five years ago, as of yesterday, was our graduation day, which is kind of cool that we're doing this on our five-year yeah. anniversary. It's cool. Northwestern Health Sciences uh, School. But then um, you were the second youngest person in our grade, which was cool, because mm-hmm. you, two years, you did an, an associate degree got your prereqs done, then you just went right into chiropractic school from there. No, I had my associates done when I was done with high school. And then I did almost two years at in Duluth. Then I rolled right in. Yeah. I actually left Duluth a half a semester before I would have graduated from there. And I was like, nah, I got everything I need. <laughs> so you just got out of there. <laughs> yeah, I got out of there. So you have a chiropractic degree. Chiropractic and then a bachelor's in human biology. I thought it'd be smart to do that during chiropractic school. Right. Not smart. In fact, mm-hmm. dumb. Because you Sorry took for anyone doing it right an now. An extra but. course load that you took to get that done. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There was, uh, I remember three trimesters. I had 31 and a half, 30 and 29 and a half credits. That's oh a lot. Gosh. Yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was disgusting. Heavy. <laughs> but technically, there's a way for you not to have a bachelor's degree, but to have a chiropractic degree. Mm-hmm. Yeah. In some states, yeah, I... Um, and then in other states, they want you to have that as well. I, who knows why each state, I mean, I mean, next door neighbor states have different oriented stoplights. So like <laughs> each state can't even agree on stoplights. So it's, it's pretty crazy. Let alone, yeah, yeah. Chiropractic law or yep. requirements for degrees, let alone. Mm-hmm. And I have no clue where I'm going to end up or where I might practice someday. So I figured I'd set the base. Right. There you go. Oh yeah. So here you are. Here I am. Yeah. Three kids. Three. How old are you? I am almost 29. I'm 28. You, you've you packed a lot of life into not so much time, and that's just... Unintended, for, sh- for sure. Yeah. 
packing all the life in <laughs> yeah, or the absolutely okay yeah well and the and the kids i guess the kids. technically but yeah yeah it, I, meant, I mean i meant a lot of life in a little time right right yeah. but it's not like you graduated chiropractic school and we're like let's go have three kids by the time we're 28 mm-hmm. No, mm-hmm. that wasn't like no there was zero plans for any of the kids yeah yeah and it's it's but it's like you were married yeah. Life was happening, and it's it's not like you were unwelcoming it. It was a welcome thing. Oh, yes, yeah. definitely welcome. Um, <laughs> yeah, still a surprise, but definitely welcomed. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how else to get into <laughs> that. So, yeah, I guess we don't need to go uh, too deep, but it's like, okay. Yeah. Well, it's it's just it's just good. So uh, you, is there, <laughs> what I'm getting at here is since you've packed a lot of life in before you're 30, like, What's next? I What's mean, from, next? From the decade of 30 to 40 to 50, is there anything other than chiropractic that you're looking to achieve? Mm. I do not know. Like, I feel I feel like right now I'm exactly where I'm supposed to be, and I've been waiting for that for a long – praying for that and working for that for a long time. So I know that the clinic I'm building, the family practice in Edina, Minnesota, just outside Minneapolis, uh, that's where I'm supposed to be. However, it's weird. I know that's not where I'll end up, um, but I feel like it's it's what's going to lead me. It's going to help me steward what I need to become for whatever's next. I, I feel like the vision I was given was to bring chiropractic into the workplace as an on-site uh, benefit for employees, um, but and that's continued to mold into, I believe it's going to be inside recovery clinics like Hazleton or uh, Minnesota Adult and Teen Challenge, things like that. Mm-hmm. Re- recovery clinics like rehab mm-hmm. yeah both like, like sure. recovery and treatment centers right on. yeah that's that's what i feel like it's going to be um but i mean but to do that as soon as as soon as the, the first company says yes i mean that's multiple employees not just docs with front desk staff a lot of stuff and before i can steward a dozen employees i, ga- I gotta learn how to steward one i gotta learn how to create the team create the cultures create the systems for one learn how to steward that in an excellent way bef- before I can imagine stewarding more, you know, same right. comes with finances. Can't imagine stewarding whatever that contract would be before mm. I steward, you know, serving four or 500 people right in a month and then a week, you know, kind of crazy. Think about it that way. But once I did, like I have a lot, of, I have a lot of peace, even though there's obviously a lot of stress, there's still a lot of peace when we talk about things like the future and stuff like that which I've been waiting for, which is great. Cause life is, life is kind of crazy. Yeah. Yeah. The future is like a, I think a very unsettling thing for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And I think you probably t- have a lot of conversations about that, about mm-hmm. the future and the uncertainty and the like carnation is probably as uncertain as ever just with times. So for you to come in and be like, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen the next decade, but it's going to be formed kind of as we go mm-hmm. and you have peace about it. Yeah. That's cool. It's, yeah. Do you feel like you've always lived with that same kind of peace Heck through no. every season? So what <laughs> no. what's the difference now versus at other times and points in life? Um, well, I think this is a totally different type of peace. And I know peace, I think, is generally talked about um, just in the same sense that I think some people say God, some mm-hmm. people say universe, uh, when I believe there is a separate and complete distinct difference. Um, I don't think those are synonymous in the least. But... To have peace now definitely is different than if I was to ever say, which I don't think I ever have, like, oh, I have peace about this situation, like when I was in high school or even undergrad. Because mm-hmm. in undergrad in Duluth, that's when I that's when I started understanding and making faith more real to me. Um, and from then to then go to Cairo school and then just have faith skyrocket through Bible studies. Philip, we were in there. A lot of other friends, the Creviers that were on this podcast and others, but, um, or the Crevier, a Crevier is go. what I meant. <laughs> yeah. Um, Isaiah. And, uh, yeah, I forgot where I was going with that once I started Where that piece Bible, so. that you've got now, you know, originated from in your life. And so you'd say that your relationship with God has been a Jesus. primary yeah. factor in changing that. Yep. The, the, 100%. Probably yeah. the only. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so another thing you said kind of in our little opening there was about how, you know, right now that you are exactly where you're supposed to be for this point in time, even Mm -hmm. if it's not the last stop on the train. Mm -hmm. How would you say you identified that 
as being where you're supposed to be? Was it peace that you knew this is right for right now, or was it some other um, mm. compilation of factors? I think a lot of it was also doors slamming, uh, praying for doors to open, praying for doors to shut. Yeah. And uh, when <laughs> I remember when I prayed that, like he started slamming and uh, the d- certain <laughs> doors shut. And so he's done that now multiple times. And then um, I guess I'm in a season right now where I'm, I'm done trying to open doors myself mm. and I'm observing a lot more, praying a lot more. And then doing this weird thing called listening a lot more to do. <laughs> and uh, when I, once I started doing all that, that's when a lot more peace started coming in. Mm. And then when I felt like I was led towards something, once taking those action steps, it only continued to lead to more peace. Mm. And so I would say that's how I've, I know I'm, where I'm supposed to be right now until, uh, well, I, I can't continue after that, un- until I'm not. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Awesome. What would you say your, uh, like, uh, this is another big question. I didn't really tip you off about. No, zero tippage. Yeah. About the entire conversation. (laughs) (laughs) It was just fine. What do you think you're the most passionate about? Just. Yeah. In in, in life? Yeah. He said it was a big question. Big question, you know? Because I I know. I feel like it's almost not even a fair question. I don't know. Well, I know what you do, <laughs> but yeah, I, I want to know if what you do is what you're actually passionate about or if, if I've honestly, so I've been asked this before, um, a few different times. Uh, one of them was actually, I think by some mentors and other doctors, right when I started chiropractic co- was called actually right before I started chiropractic college. Um, and then a couple in the middle of that three year time. And then at least one since I've been out. And then now, and I don't really know how to answer it, but that's something I'm continually excited to figure out. Um, I've been asked and I've been able to identify when someone's like, what's what part about owning a chiropractic clinic and serving others do you like the most? And I'm able to answer that one. But just what am I most passionate about? Honestly, like that's that's hard to. That's I, I don't know how to answer that. Yeah. So if you have leading questions, I'd love to dive into Gosh. that. <laughs> well, <laughs> as not, I, that's fine. I uh, introducing you was hard, man, because uh, yeah, I, I bet I wouldn't I know like, how to introduce people. Podcasting was hard. Well, even like someone that I mean, we we ran like hard and deep for three years at chiropractic school, and it's like hard to explain the relationship we had, or yeah. like the times we had, or like the the conversations that we had like late at night and not that like you replaced him, but it's like everyone needs a running buddy. And like, we ran yeah. hard for a lot of years together. And yeah. I just like have, I'm just going to bear my heart out on a podcast is I have a ton of respect for you and who you are and who you've become. And every time we get on the phone, like you'll call me and I will not answer the phone because I am not ready for what you're about to bring to the table right now. <laughs> well, I'll be like, I need to get to a place ready. where I can just sit and be able to listen. Cause if I'm like distracted or trying to handle something, I think like I had a kid in my arms and started crying and we were on the phone and I was like, yeah, I'm going to go handle what you're hearing right now because the kid was like crying. And it's like, I can't be doing that and trying to have a Ken Wilson conversation <laughs> at the same time. You know? I, d- I didn't know it was, it was that. It, well, it, it, it is, it is all, like thank that. You. And I, Right. Definitely reciprocated. But I think like actually an easy way to explain like our time together in chiropractic school was was um, vulnerability because it's just a hard time in life going through doctorate school and get getting just getting it done. That's Mm -hmm. hard, whether it is MD, whether it's chiropractic, no matter what it is. But then I think just the vulnerability and other things like I was I would say relatively new to my faith. Right. And then jumping into Bible studies, late night conversations, a lot more listening, a lot less talking uh, with, you know, you, Patrick, Isaiah, and then others about faith. Like I was more observing the entire time, gathering, learning, gleaning. Um, and it, now I've like you're a heavyweight, <laughs> you know, you're uh, <laughs> there's some of the conversations that we've we've had. I, I remember that about you observing learning, listening, and now I feel like you're doing a lot more like leading. And at least with me, I mean, I feel like (laughs) I get more than I give with you. That's not true. For example, you, uh, 
lead in question here is you listen to a lot of podcasts or a lot of like material leadership stuff. Mm-hmm. Y- you do, right? Yeah, yeah, I used to do a lot more. I've actually, the last um, couple months, I've, I've just taken a break from a lot of audio. I'm going back to just reading books, <laughs> old school. Yeah, doing books. more reading. Yeah. Andy Frisella, right? That's the guy's name. That's the, the yeah, I've listened to him and yeah. his podcast the absolute most. And so you're really good at just pulling out the the raw meat of content and then using that for how you want to use it. And so mm-hmm. you you told me on the phone because I, I think I don't know what I was exactly talking about, but just like the struggle of being uh, efficient in executing tasks. And you said, Phil, here's what you need to do. You need to get a notebook or a sticky note or a note card. Write down five things you want to get done tomorrow. Maybe not even five things. Maybe even one if you need to start with one. This is what you said to me. Maybe Mm. three if you can, but try to get to five. Write down five things. Do it. Cross it off the list. And if you can cross off every item, you put a W at the end of that page. And then that's a win for Mm -hmm. the day. If you don't cross all five off, you put an L right there. Mm -hmm. You lost the day. You you weren't able to complete what you set out to do. Mm -hmm. Do that again tomorrow. And then again and again and try to string some W's and and see how many wins of days you can put together. And that influenced me a lot. I'm like, things changed after I started getting into that habit of making the list. And that's awesome. That was a a conversation was a while ago, too. It was a while ago. That's cool. And it's, you know, one of those that you you don't always like I don't think we ever really got the chance to follow up and be like, hey, that was that was good. I mean, we're, we're Thank both, you. both a little busy. We're busy. Family, and businesses, like it's, and then, then we get to catch up usually 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night. For sure. The late night hey, stuff, you know? Good so. night. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I that's I'm kind cool. of stealing no, the, some thunder because I don't no, know if I could have. No, that's good. I, I, lo- I love the, uh, when you're finally stringing together those dubs, you, you know, you string five, seven, well, seven in a row, you just want a week string a few of those together you just you just want a month um the whole habit is to create the habit of winning but with what winning looks like for you like that that checklist is going to look different for you with your chiropractic clinic and your family than you know an nhl hockey player it's gonna be different Mm -hmm. with that being said totally random this and then go back to your list um is there hockey here not really (laughs) No. We, we've got that like triple A uh, like hockey the team, Stormers or something. No, they're, it's something else. Stormers. They're the football. They're the what arena football. Oh, it's, it's something else. What is it? <laughs> yeah, I I like Rough stars. Riders and Cedar Rapids play hockey. No, I was thinking about the and Des Moines then Minnesota one. Wild. Not Minnesota Wild. Oh, Iowa the Wild. Wild. Yeah, Iowa Wild. Wild. Yeah. Sorry. That's my state. Clearly, yes. I you am are from way <laughs> Oh yeah, out. no, never mind. No, they're feeder team. They're G League. They're yes. UHO, WHO. Yeah, they're here. Matt Bargos are those. Never mind. See, I knew it. He knows. He does know. He knows. I knew it. Right. I don't know what they're called though. But I, like it's Iowa Wild, that's all. Yeah, that's all. I mean, not yeah. all like right, but you know, <laughs> but you know. So high sorry. school, <laughs> high school hockey. I don't even know. Like, does Iowa State have a hockey team? U of I have. They yes, U of Iowa. Iowa. Iowa State has a hockey team, and they're mm-hmm. actually pretty good. Mm. Yeah, I believe that. Yeah, I don't know. I had a friend school. on the hockey team. That was cool. That would be cool. <laughs> I don't know any high schools that have that. Mm-mm. We didn't. It was all the Green Minnesota County guys doesn't. that came down to Iowa State for school that <laughs> played on the hockey yeah, team. That's so. usually how it goes. All right, sorry. That was, I was just wondering. I was well, thinking about that on the way here. I was like, honey, I don't know why she would know. <laughs> quick catch a hockey teams? game? <laughs> 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 catch, catch a quick game. She's right full here. of, Cammy's full of, you know, wealth she's, of knowledge. She's, she's got toys. knowledge. No clue. Where s- the sum- yeah, she does. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Are you a big hockey fan? Because I noticed your daughter has a hockey pajama onesie yeah on. i just noticed that today too when i grabbed the pajamas out of the suitcase i had no clue that we had those our boys do yeah my yeah. my uh my oldest brantley he's he's back home actually playing he has practice today and tomorrow hockey practice, had practice today and tomorrow it's kind of cute he, it's his first year on the ice he's just this little thing except his last practice i had this little spurt of like proud moment still had to like discipline at the same time this kid was making him angry because he kept bumping <laughs> into him and the kid fell Psh, weak skater and then I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's bad. I'm kidding. And uh, and then Brantley slashed the dude when he was on the ice and was like stop yelling at him, stop hitting me. He got up. The kid did it again. So Brantley turns around, and just cross checks him. I've never seen Brantley have an attitude like that except for Bryson at home when he steals a toy or something. But in public, he's just this pretty meek little dude. Must be something about the ice. 
Yeah, it's right. It's hockey cold. games get wild. <laughs> does. I've, I've been to like one hockey game in my life, and like they're fun. Eyes were wide open the whole time. They're fun. Yeah, they're fun. They I are brought, fun. I brought Cammy. It was uh, last win. No, the winter before last, and um, to her first Minnesota Gopher college hockey game. And my dad's had season tickets for a while, and we're row two in the corner, uh, right where they score. <laughs> Mm. And so they score, and everyone, right, stands up. It's kind of habit reflex, and we're high five. And I turn around to high five Cammy, and I'm like, I said to look, I had to look down, and she's just looking around, all like, whoa, it looks fun. <laughs> it was, was kind of funny. And I was like, stand up, stand up. Then everyone starts chanting, and we're, um, we're, cha- we're doing the goal chant, which is you spell Minnesota. I was like, what are we? What are we saying? What letter's next? I was like, <laughs> you spell Minnesota, huh? Spell the whole thing of Minnesota. M mm-hmm. I N N. The whole thing. Jeez. E S O T A. It's just a long state to spell. It's it like I O W A is, it's not is long Pennsylvania enough. Pennsylvania or something. <laughs> but sorry. All right. I'll I'll bring us back. So what were we saying? <laughs> we're bringing it back. Yeah. We're bringing yeah, it, bring it all the way back. back. Yeah. That sorry. was a good tangent, man. Yeah. <laughs> sorry. And I knew it. I knew it was the feeder team here too. I just need a reset. <laughs> well, I thought it was the Barnstormers. I apologize, Barnstormers and Wild. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so the whole the whole idea of that is to string enough W's together to uh, yeah. just get in the habit of winning. Because uh, I, we were talking about how earlier we've been having little mini podcasts all day long, basically, which is what happens when Ken comes to stay at your house. But we, we're all just trying to get through life better today than yesterday. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, and I think this this helps this helps me yeah. because I know Amen. like what I got done yesterday, I don't need to do again today unless it's, you know, one of the habits that you need to do every day, you know, because yeah. there are those things. Mm-hmm. But um and that's what the goal of this is. Um when Andy first, it's called the power list. And I got this idea from him. Definitely not my idea. There's the girl in the hockey PJs. Yeah. That was um, really cute. She has a bib on now. She's your little much. <laughs> A little um, one-year-old coming down the stairs on her own. That was really cute. I love to see her dad. Oh, man, <laughs> there's Cammie. <laughs> that was awesome. But you know what it makes me think of, uh, like, stringing wins of a day, week, could be, you know, month, mm-hmm. year. Yeah. It makes me think, like, what do those wins really represent? And they represent days of discipline. Mm-hmm. Because to <coughs> go through mm-hmm. and cross off your goals and your purposes for a day, I mean, it's, it takes discipline to do it. And yeah. I feel like having the concrete list to say, you know, this is what me applying myself today looks like. Mm-hmm. It's just bringing in the discipline to live out your goals. Yeah. And actually, mm-hmm. even speaking of discipline, a- and Andy Frisella, again, he has a program called 75 Heart. And uh, it's all about developing discipline. And, um, okay. I hope I get this right, but you have the five critical tasks every day to do in this program, and there's not compromise, and you're not supposed to change it to meet your day, your standards, whatever. Like, you do these five things. And he has a book on it as well called 75 Hard. The book describes it and the reasons why and the benefits. Obviously much better than me, but anyway, the first one is gallon of water a day. The second one is 10 pages of a book a day. Nonfiction, so don't, uh, you know, like uh, self-help or like something like that. Yeah. Something to learn. Yep. Um, stick to a diet with whatever your goals might be. And then uh, two workouts a day, 45 minutes minimum each, but one of them has to be outside. Two okay. workouts a day. Two workouts a day. One of them's got to be outside. And then the last one is take a progress picture. And so obviously there's tons of reasons for each one of these five specifically, but that workout one with what you just said, Isaac, about discipline is two workouts a day. First of all, you can't just do, all right, here's my 45 minute workout. I'm going to take a water break and do another 45 minute. Like he says, no, like let's actually get into it. Space them out a couple few hours. So it is two different separate and distinct workouts. And one of them being outside, meaning circumstances for life, whatever your goals are, whatever you're trying to do, they are, will never be perfect. Yeah. So in Minnesota in the summer, we have some hot days, same here, right? It can get like up to a hundred or even higher. You don't want to be outside, but if you want to hit your goals and, or if just straight up, if you want to, do this program, you have to, right? Mm-hmm. Um, or in the winter, it can get kind of cold over here, up here, That's true. around here. And so still get your workout in. And that could just be walking for 45 minutes straight, maybe a hard walk. But anyway, 
the whole thing is you get all five done, and if you miss one of them, if you forget a progress picture, which I did on day 58, <laughs> you have to start over if you want to complete it. So what I ended up doing was finishing because I was working on just simply creating discipline. I technically, and I note this, so Andy, if you ever listen to this, I mean, one, that'd be interesting, too, if you ever do. I know I didn't complete 75 hard. I get it. But what I accomplished was what I was looking for was to create the habit of doing certain things in my life. Again, like working out, like reading, things that I want to keep doing for the rest of my life. I don't need to do two, but that wasn't the point. The, the point was to build discipline and the habit of discipline again. And I was able to do that again. Um, the water, I, I knew I needed to drink a lot more water, so that was fun to do too. Obviously, yes, people, well, I pee too much. My job this, my job that. Yeah, I, I get it. I get it. Everyone pees more when you drink a gallon of water. But your body will also adapt and get used to it, mm-hmm. you know. And then the health benefits, X, Y, Z, A, B, C. I mean, everyone knows that. The, why water's good for you. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a lot of, like, my first advice. Yeah. <laughs> people, especially when. In the office or just anywhere. Yeah. Yep. Dude, a- amen. Gut <laughs> issues, energy issues, brain fog, autoimmune. Headaches, migraines. Water. Back double, pain. Whatever you're doing. <laughs> Everything. Make it more now. Yeah. And then, yeah. Yeah. Water and movement. Like, people yeah. don't understand, like, pe- actually, the bi- let's talk about Andy Frisell again. So, he owns a giant supplement company, like a supplement enterprise, first form. But before that, he just had one a supplement store called Supplement Superstores in St. Louis, Missouri, or something like that. And when he started focusing on customer service, but then also teaching people education, like what we're talking about, and the easy things, the basics, that's when things started to skyrocket. Yes, of course, his revenue, but also just a lot more customers turning one to two because of customer service. So someone probably came to him with like six tubs of things, told him all his goals and win all that. And Andy, because he also never saw people coming into the store, he wanted to just literally just keep someone there and keep talking because he was bored. And so he's like, well, we'll talk about their goals. There's a good place to start. So they would tell him their goals and then he would ask some lifestyle things. And essentially he'd tell them, Look, you don't actually need four of these five jugs of supplements. Do this one. This one's more important for the goals you're talking about. But the other two, like, start with a, a lot more water and, the, and, and like, do this and this and this with your diet. And in a month, come back, let me know what your goals are, and, the, and then we'll talk about it from there. So, he, yes, he talked himself out of a sale today, but he just gained a lifelong client. He, he told all his friends who told all his friends because they just kept actually hitting their goals from going to someone who's going to tell them the truth. And what I tell people all the time, even in my office, is that same thing. Like, drink more water. You will feel so much better, and your body's going to function better. I'm always talking about function rather than feeling. Of course, I'm, a, I'm an empathetic human being. If I could snap, make you feel better, I promise you I would. I don't have magic snaps. I think people think that, or they're, they're hoping. This doctor, they're just finally going to make me feel better. No doctor can promise feeling better. That's what we were talking about earlier, unless they're doing deadening the neurology or some type of pill or surgery, stuff like that. You got to make the body function better before it can feel better. Unless you're tricking it. Medicine. So here's a guy talking about how to function instead of giving you something that's going to make you feel good. Yeah, or, or feel like you're bypassing time or natural law. Which is what all the quick fixes and all the marketing things do is here's the problem you have. Yeah. Here's our solution, mm-hmm. and here's why you should buy it because it's going to get you what you want now, which is the purple unicorn. It's fool's gold. It's mm-hmm. short term gratification. Yeah. Instant, I think is what they call that. There Instant gratification. Instant. Short term, all the same. Yeah. My uh, one of my friends and 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 mentors. Um, when I was talking to him about designing my report or consultation or the flow of it, I, f- I forget exactly what, but he said you have to answer the th- the three things that everyone's ask, wondering when they're coming in to see, okay, what are the results of my scans, my x-rays, this or that? Can you help me? So you got to first even talk about what that means to help them. Um, what's it going to cost? How long is it going to take? Those three things, no matter what you're doing, those are processing through your mind as a customer, as a client. And really, they're, they're wondering, can you make me feel better yesterday and can someone else pay for it if we really want to get deeper <laughs> into it, no matter what's going on? Yeah. Kind of nutty. It's tough. Healthcare is hard. Yeah. Healthcare is hard. Mm-hmm. So we were talking about how, like me as the doctor, I cannot do anything to make you feel better. 
Like, A, I definitely can't promise that, but it's not me that does any of this feel betterness. Yeah, I, I, f- I feel a, a little change in, in verbiage. You, there's, of course, things we can do to help them feel better and stuff like that. Same with other people, right? But it's the whole idea of promising when they're going to feel better. And even, well, honestly, even promising, yeah, I will make you feel better, you know? Like, even taking into account neurology just in general, we have billions and billions of nerves in our bodies and only roughly 10% controls pain. 20, I think, is sensation, if I remember correctly. But And a bunch else is just running autonomic function mm-hmm. that you're not thinking about. That's the majority of your nerve function mm-hmm. is your brain communicating with things like your liver, which does a million jobs, including detox, which... When I think of Andy Frisella's thing here, working out, drinking water, and being on a diet to help reach your goals, that's all going to help you detox, which is like a major function of your body that's kind of yeah, forgotten. Well, you know? really, all those things. That, there isn't one system of your body that doing those things aren't, isn't going to help improve Correct. in some way. Help, help function better and Correct. therefore feel better. Yeah. Which is going to help all that autonomic function that you're not thinking about work more optimal, more efficient. Yeah. And then therefore, boom, now you're a higher functioning human being. I tell, I tell a lot of people a side effect of chiropractic care is you might, you might feel better. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of a funny conversation gets people thinking, but it's also fun at the same time. Yeah. Cause the goal is what we talk about with, you know, aligning, stabilizing the spine and increased function when we're talking about the integrity of the nervous system. But then a side effect is you, you probably will feel better. Don't know when, but you probably will. It's awesome. That's obviously not quite how I say it. <laughs> There's something to it. There's something to chiropractic. I can't even explain it all the time. I mean, we can talk about neurology for a long time, and some days at the end of the day, I'm like, I don't know why that worked, but I'm glad it did. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's what well, we can talk about the what, and then some people define miracles different, but we could talk about the miracles we've seen just in our practice in the last one year that – listeners or viewers or whatever might not literally ever believe yeah but you can't argue testimony yeah and even one person i was telling you this and it happened of course with other things as well but something simple not simple but like uh common like migraines chronic migraines especially and after one adjustment one of my practice members has not had a migraine again and and she's like is that average does that happen all the time i was like absolutely (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> I was shaking my head right, right? like no no but but that's cool yeah. like hallelujah praise yeah. the lord right and then another girl with excruciating knee and hip pain right and after I think four adjustments she went out she and ran a half marathon or was training for a marathon so in her training she did a half and it was like I felt great is that is that like pretty common in, in how the muscle repairs and recovers and, and works under your chiropractic care again I was like absolutely shaking my head no right <laughs> Way but, faster than, but it's cool. Yeah, mm-hmm. very cool. What what portion of health in like an individual and their physiology would you say is the um, auto system, like the stuff that runs itself and does itself um, without your like intentional doing, and what portion of it is about the actions you are like intentionally taking with your body? you get what I mean like all those systems like you talked about the liver that does a million thing or a hundred things or whatever I've never once thought about what my liver is doing mm-hmm. but yet it's doing all this stuff pretty cool huh yeah it is cool kind of a gift I, I would say so I so. I, I've uh well one no clue I got no clue mm-hmm. I, I that's my short thanks answer. for being up front about <laughs> that <laughs> you're yeah. welcome but I, I've also yeah. told a lot of people in relation to very similar questions We were given a pretty cool gift, and that gift is that our body heals itself. Mm -hmm. If I walk out of here, if I slip or if I bonked into that, cut my shin wide open, that's going to heal itself. Once the blood stops, all the collagen collagen fibers are going to start forming. All the white blood cells are going to do its thing. The the TH1 or T1, T2 immune system, like it's all going to do it. Now i got to think about it. But even though we were given that gift, it's still our job to steward that gift, Mm -hmm. kind of like what we were talking about earlier with employees or finances and so it's also what are we just what are we doing to steward that gift and in that same breath i do think health can become an idol for a ton of people uh, and and just this constant pursuit of health and well-being which don't get me wrong that's good always be focused on that right i'm not gonna tell you no don't 
eat some Tootsie Rolls. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, um... <laughs> Uh, You're on the Tootsie Roll train today. Uh, yeah, it's because I've had a bag about about a full size <laughs> bag today already. Oh boy. Yeah, it's a thing. You're on vacation. <laughs> but um, so then, would you say like health is more like the starting point, and the idea is to just not mess it up? Is that kind of what you're getting at? Like health is the default. That's kind of what I was thinking. Is your your body is constantly healing. It's constantly repairing itself because that's the way your body is set up. Like every, I believe it's 127 days is the average uh, red blood cell lifespan. And so like the blood you had four months ago is not at all the same cells. Mm. It's completely different. So there's always like newness of life Mm. coming. Right. And I think, I can't remember that maybe it's every four months. It might be six months Mm. where it's like your entire cellular system. Seven years. Seven years. The entire body. That. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if they all started at the same time. I, I got uh, Reggie Gold, Dr. Reggie Gold. Mm-hmm. It's one of his famous talks. He talked about that. You you have none of you left. That was seven years ago. It's all. So been, if you've been married 21 years, you have you have three new three new wives <laughs> in that time. That's funny. It's part of the same Good joke. Talk. Not right. my joke. Not my joke. But it was funny when I heard that first time for sure. <laughs> well, which is why you are what you eat is kind of true i mean there's flaws in that theory because it's not correct but there's there is very valid truth to it especially when it comes to simple cellular replication we are organic like there's nothing of us that's hardware unless you've got like a fake or something you know and that's even kind of a scary thought to think about how seven years like your body has to like totally new cells have to come in and receive Mm. that Mm. hardware that's in you you know so with what you're talking about, like, you've already got it. Just don't screw it up. Yeah. Um, one, I think daily stress, life and stress, it's stress is unavoidable. It's omnipresent. It's everywhere. Um, just like gravity, it's always pushing down on you, right? Like, well, even gravity, that's stress too. That can degenerate your spine. Um, but I think even like a, bring it in relation to chiropractic, there's a chiropractic, there's a portion of the, of the I'm going to call it philosophy for right now, that it states we're just, with every adjustment, we're returning the system, the nervous system, back to normal, back to, back to whole. We're restoring. Everything's about restoration. You're bringing it back, right? Like if we defined r- restoration or restorative mm-hmm. work, it's, it's simply bringing it back to what its original state was. Yeah. Um, yeah, and that's that's why I think. What did I text you about the quote about chiropractic like a week or two ago? Like chiropractic is about restoring and maintaining the integrity of the nervous system. Yep, mm-hmm. I think that was it. Yep, and that's a phenomenal like definition. Like, hey, what's chiropractic? Boom. Now, does that explain it? If you just said that to someone on this sidewalk, are they going to understand what you're talking about? Probably Absolutely not. not. Right, but um, that's still a very valid explanation of what sure. it is. Yeah. Good. That's a good question. Well, it, and it makes me think about some other areas. I was just telling Dr. Philip here earlier about like this uh, book I've been reading, and it's it's about health and about thought life, um, spiritual life in relationship to health, and how um, you know your brain. And I know this is I'm sure related to chiropractic in one way. Like your brain controls a lot of what your body does, all of what your body does, <laughs> yeah. like your nervous system. Like you guys were just saying. Yeah. I mean. It's like you think about your nerves being pain or sensory, but that's, you said 20% is sensory. Mm -hmm. So the other 80% is running the show. Mm -hmm. And so it's like your mind is telling your body what to do, whether you're conscious of it or not. Um, And so like along with that, one of the points that was brought up in this book I was reading, it's called The God Prescription. I'm enjoying it a lot. It's written by a neurosurgeon um, who's a man of faith and just sees how the principles of the word are in action in uh, medicine or in his practice of surgery. And so one of the things he brought up is how really like the default setting emotionally for people is not fearful and stressed out. Like if you look at a baby, they're not like afraid of like he, he brought up the example of like you could set a baby like on the side of a cliff and it wouldn't be afraid no. of that. wouldn't have a clue yeah. that anything was wrong. Yeah. It was Learned. because, yeah, it's taught that this is, yeah. 
what your response should be. This is yeah. how you should do it. And Ex- you know, I mean, there's there's yeah. there's an element of wisdom in being taught things, and I mean, you should know the things that you should be cautious of. But mm-hmm. I mean, fear doesn't really help anybody. I don't I don't see fear as a helpful force. And in this book, he actually talks about how when you're fearful, it releases cortisol and uh, yeah. adrenals into your body, and it causes an inflamed state, yeah. which is conducive to um, destroying health rather than yeah. increasing it. Yeah. There's a, I was just, what came to mind when you said um, fear, there was a, a discussion and I think I was either listening to Gary Vee or Andy Frisella, but it was one talking about the other and, uh, or with the other. I don't, I don't remember at this point. This was a few years ago, but the conversation was about, are you going to work harder to gain $10,000 or keep someone from stealing your ten thousand dollars and most most people um are the latter Mm. which is like the fear of losing or the fear of regret or or anything like that yeah um there's a point i I must i don't remember but that was an interesting conversation for sure Mm. shoot sorry i don't remember i was gonna go with that but something about fear something about what you said and and it being good well, I'm glad well you, not fear being good, but you know, but what I mean. the point being, yeah. Good. yeah, I'm glad you thought so. And I guess I just bring it up because, you know, I think sometimes we can have the idea that I'm supposed to be stressed out and I'm supposed to be yeah. super like busy and I can't manage everything and I'm mm-hmm. scared of this and anxious about this and upset or depressed about this and worried about this. Yeah. But that's some people not. almost have it as a badge of honor. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of our pastors, uh, the campus pastor for, River Valley in uh, Minnetonka, he he says, like, people are almost proud to be worriers. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, I'm just worried about them or, or stuff like that, where if we're talking, like, just straight up scripture, it's pretty blatant and pretty pretty clear. Like, Do not worry. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, and people just wear it like a badge. And then, therefore, like, if they truly are actually worried and anxious about se- whatever, mm-hmm. You're right. Then that leads to a lot more with the adrenal glands, the kidneys, the, the cortisol, and the hormone levels. But then this constant hardwiring of this fight or flight, mm-hmm. like locked in stress mode. Yeah. You know? When he talked about in this book, too, how it affects like your your vascular system, how like your veins become like brittle and hard and like not a way that they're supposed to be. And he attributes some of that stress to long-term heart disease and how problems that show much later are really because you're living a stressed out life. Yeah. You never get your emotions under control. Yeah. Well, that makes sense, right? Like if the nervous system is like stuck in that sympathetic overdrive is Mm -hmm. what it's called in neurology, that chronic fight or flight state, just like in this, in this stress cycle, therefore if it's stuck there, it's only going to give stress signals to the brain. Well, what's going to come out of the brain? stress signals and then that's just a feedback loop and that's just going to keep happening for the yeah. cardiovascular system the respiratory system all that so it is it is crazy all of it will always come back down to neurology some way mm-hmm. somehow and, th- and that's the, i think the wild thing just yeah. like what philip was saying where we, we talk about health all the time but then there's just sometimes just be like that that that's cool and no i don't know the exact mechanism of it and nor may someone ever mm-hmm. but it happens yeah and it's cool. And another quote here is, what is happening in you is always more important than what is happening to you. Mm-hmm. And so, like, we could talk for a long time about trying to control that fear state. And it's like fear itself is not the, it's letting it overcome you. Your reaction to you. fear. Correct. Yeah. Right. yeah. Or that mastery of fear is what we're supposed to strive for, not the absence of fear. Because mm-hmm. fear has a purpose. I mean, it's an emotion. Just like that stress. Correct. Yeah. yeah. So it's it's not letting it be overbearing and, mm-hmm. to, and take you to a place of distress, which is a fun word that I've been playing around with instead of just stress. Are you stressed out? Like stre- stress is good and it means you're alive. If you were in a stressless life, A, you'd, I don't know, I, you'd be bored and you're probably just not doing a whole lot if you're not feeling a little bit of strain on your body, a little bit of stress. But the moment that stress becomes distress, that's a point where that what you're experiencing on the outside is now deeply affecting you on the inside, mm-hmm. putting you into a state that you're talking about mm-hmm. increased cortisol, 
increased inflammation. And now this emotional storm that you might have going on is now creating physical toll on the inside of you. Mm -hmm. And if that's not learned how to handle, that's a flood that can go out of control and doesn't necessarily lead anywhere good. I think you just actually listed two of the four main components, or at least one of them, in uh, mass psychosis, which uh, one of Joe Rogan's latest podcasts mm. with Dr. Matthew... Something. Dr. Matthew. <laughs> sure. Episode 1,747, I think. Dr. McCullough? I don't know. <laughs> Matthew, something. <laughs> but uh, but uh, he, he talks about mass psychosis. That one. Yeah, that guy. Right there. Dr. Peter McCullough. Oh, yep. Okay. Peter. Who's Matthew? Who's Ma- Matthew McConaughey. We were talking about Matthew McConaughey earlier. That got oh. stuck. <laughs> sure. Stuck, stuck yeah. in my head. Great. Great sounding voice, that guy. Not Peter. Sorry, Peter. <laughs> um, but anyway, um, yeah, he talked about mass psychosis and what's going on in the world. And uh, pretty sure you just listed one, if not two, of the main components of that and what's what's happening <laughs> in today. Um, Life is crazy. I mean, I, I bought a book recently. I haven't totally dug into it, but it's How to Survive in a World Gotten Crazy. It's a good book. And it, you read it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. By Rick Renner? Yeah. Yeah, How to Keep Your Head on Straight in a World Gotten Crazy. Yeah. It's a good book. I'm really excited to get into that because I, and I can't even imagine what some people thought, like in the Roman era. Mm. And I think about the Colosseum and, oh man, some of that history that was just, there are a lot of intense moments in history. Brutal. Yeah. yeah. Brutal. Brutal. And it's maybe more socially and mentally and emotionally brutal now. Yes. Somehow. Because, I mean, I don't feel like, oh gosh, and we're in a first world country and we have first world problems. There's a lot of our problems we have come because we have too much time on our hands because we're not fighting for food and shelter. You know, mm-hmm. like that part's done. And, and so because of that, we have to do other things. And so we have things like Facebook. Like there's a lot of people who don't do Facebook because there's simply no time because they have to figure out how to eat and where, how they're going to stay warm one day, you know? So a lot of what we're talking about is first world countries, but that brings in the opportunity for some of these crazy things and crazy mass states of emotion to happen. And I, I mean, COVID, of course, we could, again, talk for days about COVID and what it's done and the, the mass psychosis and how, I mean, there's a lot of people just hinging on fear yeah yeah and it's some of it's justified and i feel like this is a rather intense topic to get into but it's like my father-in-law died he got covid he got pneumonia his lungs failed he went in in emergency medicine they could not they were not the solution they did not save his life you know and so looking back on that if i could go in and change the situation i, I would deeply you know so like COVID is not I'm not saying it's to it's something to oh just don't be afraid of and just ignore it and just like no but it's about are you going to be a slave to that fear and what it might do to you or are you going to figure out a way to live your best life among it how to keep your head on straight in a world gone crazy because if you want to just kind of like hide in your room and hang out there and not expose yourself to any stress or anything because of what might happen to you great but I think faith is a greater way like well, even, even on, yeah, yes. <laughs> faith that something positive can happen, not just like faith in God, even though I think that is a crucial part to keeping your head on, yeah. out on straight, but just like faith that I'm going to go outside and I'm not going to get COVID the first person I talk to. And die. And die. Correct. Yeah. And, you know, so this fear state and what we're talking about and how it influences your physical health is real. Yes. And I don't want to shy away from a conversation like that at all. Like, and I think the, even uh, the gymnast, Simone Biles, is getting a lot of attention now. And she's being praised again because of how she stepped out of the Olympics because she didn't feel mentally there. And I think there's a lot more that goes. And we're talking about a person's personal life here. Who knows what was going on behind the scenes? All we saw was through our TV screens, this person has, you know, immense amount of pressure because she's expected to win gold in gymnastics like that's hard out of all the people that have lived there's a minor handful the one percent of the one percent of the one percent who have ever done that and she's just like oh yeah well she should win that's extremely hard you know and she felt that pressure and it weighed on her mentally and it's like i can't make my body physically perform 
that's mental stress. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that gets the attention in healthcare that it should, because we only really address it until you've broken, until you're shattered. Yeah. And that hurts me, like, as a person. That's also why there's so much focus nowadays. And even tying back to what we were talking about before with almost health being an idol, that there's, that's such a gray mark because health, everyone starts focusing on it once it's lost. Once, once there's already been the limitations of matter, whether that's with organs or whether that's with immune, it doesn't matter. But if things become a lot more proactive and preventative in nature, things will always go better. And that's a big part of even what Dr. Peter talks about in that podcast on how the only thing they started doing was talking about how to, how to protect. And the only studies that were happening a lot in early COVID were, weren't even how to, how to uh, not let people get sick but it was okay when there's sick people in the hospital how would we pro- how do we protect our workers it wasn't how do, how can we help patients treat this at home or what even drugs can we give them before or if we detect it early mm-hmm. it, it wasn't any of that mm-hmm. and and i mean that's a big tell for the direction of of where things are going i think and if they care or not about you about your health about people that are already sick or not um but he does a he does a great and this guy isn't anti I mean he's he's in the cardiologist field I think he's the most journaled most publicized or, or editor or something like that highly touted um, and, and he's not anti vaccine in the least in fact he's I'm pretty sure he's pretty pro vaccine but mm-hmm. he he very clearly articulates what's happening <laughs> mm-hmm. and and the uh, silliness also the yeah. very realness. And there was some stuff he even said specifically in, in relation to some of the vaccine portions of this that I, st- I still disagreed with him. I know people, oh, how would chiropractor disagree with him? Well, it's, there's more to it than that. But point is, he, he still clearly articulated where the focus was, where it wasn't, and why that is extremely wrong, like extremely, and, and how that's not for the betterment of the people or the nation or the safety or health of people. He does a good job. He should get a Nobel Peace Prize for just that podcast, or Joe Rogan should. <laughs> yeah, man. I think any good health protocol is focused on proactive protecting it. Like a good health protocol, a good health plan for yourself is not just, well, this is what you should do after A, B, or C happens. Mm-hmm. Like, Well, imagine if you approached like work that way. Like my standard of success is just that I don't get fired. Like how good of a yeah. job or career are you going to have? Do we talk? I, don't, I have no clue now if we, t- if you and I talked about this or if we talked about this last time on the podcast at all. So if it, if it is uh, my bad viewers or <laughs> listeners, but uh, uh, someone on the topic of that, like, I hope I just don't get fired or mm-hmm. what can I do to be more proactive, to be ahead of the game? What can I do more on top of my job to be noticed, to be called up and stuff mm-hmm. like that? It's like being, would you rather be smart or just not dumb? Would you rather be strong or just not weak? Yeah. You know, would you rather be healthy or just not dead? Right. <laughs> well, a big difference in all those. And the, I think part of the problem with it too is one focuses entirely on the negative aspect one isn't about what's possible and what i could be yep and the potential it's all about just avoiding the worst possible scenario but you know you think about one thing long enough you look at one thing long enough you you're going to end up there and so even in that approach of i'm focused on the worst case scenario that's actually another thing in that book I was talking about earlier, the God prescription. He talks about that too, how a focus, whether, you know, whether you want it to be fear or something else, focusing on the negative in the long term is going to bring mm-hmm. you closer to the negative. You and can't so, focus on the wrong, even in uh, driving race cars, they teach you very, one of the first things before you even get in the car is they teach you what to look at, what not to look at. Mm. And I learned that one of my past uh, business and chiropractic mentors, um, was learning how to race his McLaren <laughs> and it, just casual. And, uh, and that was a big thing they taught him before they ever got on the track is even if you feel like you're spinning out of control, you cannot, you will not look at the wall. Yeah. You have to look where you're going because everything about you, your physiology, your natural instincts and gonna everything go is going to try and yes, go there. Yep. 
or try as hard as possible to, even if you might right. still slide into the wall, just don't look at the wall. Yeah, I used to ride motorcycles some, and it was kind of the same thing there. It was like if you yeah. see a pothole on the road, don't look at the pothole. Look at where you want to go. Yeah. Like envision yourself driving. Maybe that's how I always the, hit the pothole. The good holes. course <laughs> that you want to go on, yeah. It's like look where you want to be, not yeah. where you don't want to be. And I think it Very goes beyond advice. just driving. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, for anything, sure it does. you want to look at the positive before something, not against something. I think that's another good one. I mean, that almost gets relational. Like, rather than being against this group and that group, be for a group. I'd rather talk to somebody Very political who, too. who is for something rather than somebody who's against everybody. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's people preference. we probably all know that was like, oh, like, screw or F this guy. And it's like, well, well what are you going for it's like well i don't know i just hate that guy and it's like man and that, that how much doesn't energy? ring any bells at all huh? <laughs> <laughs> you, you really hid that one well <laughs> dr ken <laughs> it was good it's true though and it's not a good approach to life because then i think you no, kind of lose not. lose your own direction then too because yeah you're not going anywhere no. it's just not giving you the bad thing and it's I think it's obviously better to be optimistic than pessimistic. Mm -hmm. So if you're for something versus not against or not against something, I'm not against dying or I just want to not die versus I want to live well. One Mm -hmm. is clearly pessimistic based versus optimistic based. And I I think you're always going to be in the light if you stay optimistic about what you want and what your goals are. And don't hit that pothole versus let's take the road that's better for me right now. I can already hear some people right now going, well, but I'm just a realist. It's like, well, if you're saying that, just to still focus on what's wrong, no, you're not. You're a, you're a, a negative a realist. Pessimist. <laughs> yeah. Right. AKA right. A pessimist. Well, I was actually going to ask, so what does this mean we actually do then on a day-to-day basis? And if you are that realist and it's like, well, I could hit that pothole or my reality is, is that sometimes I'm just not going to be able to avoid every pothole. Fact. Fact. So, what's the worst thing that could happen? And then you kind of go ahead and send your mind down that and then be like, well, how would you deal with it? And then I I think most times you're going to come to a place and realize, well, it'll be okay at the end of the day. And especially if you have kind of a a long-term vision versus like an acute, like if you hit a pothole and your tire blows and your whole front end goes to kaput and you've got to get it fixed, like obviously in in a one-day span, that's bad. That's going to ruin your day. Your day is going to be a little different after that. But if your viewpoint is the whole week or the whole month or your whole year, that's going to be a blip on the radar, you know? And so again, even if you are that realist, this is me saying, what would I tell someone else to do is try to think both big picture and small picture what's happening. Well, we can take that back down to the power list, the five things. Like you have to build the day to day steps based upon your goals or your vision, whatever you want, whatever you want to call it. Right? Like if I want, to be stronger and have it, see my abs again. I, it's funny when people say have abs. It's like, well, you got them. Next. It might not be formed that well. And they might be hidden a little bit. Is all. Right. But um, right. most people, it's us, you know. But uh, you know what I mean? Like you have to have the big picture to make the small picture or vice versa. You're really taking me exactly where I want to go because that's maybe the, yeah, my big takeaway from this whole conversation right now is is the list. Write it down. Where do you want to be? What are the things that are you can do today to help get you there? Knock it out. Check off the list. Go for it. What do you got to lose? Write the list. No, nothing. You have nothing to lose. Yeah. If, if, you're, if it's for what you're going after, the mm-hmm. only thing you have to gain is what you're going after. Mm-hmm. Or at least close to it. Or a different version of it, which may be the version you were supposed to get anyway. But I, the, the, the thing I like most about it is just movement. It's action. It's, it's, it's doing, you know, and you can take that in, in, in increasing your faith in in your health, uh, chiropractic in your own program, uh, everything. I like it. The only thing worse than moving in the wrong direction is not moving at all. Death. Stagnancy. Yeah. Blood. It does make me think though, there's a cost to movement. There is something required to move because, I mean, you could talk about that in a physiological standpoint. I mean, it takes energy sure. to move, it takes yeah. exertion of one kind or another yeah. to do any kind of movement. 
take it to a business sphere. Mm-hmm. Usually it takes capital and time and possibly relationships, social capital capital to make things like that happen. Always. So then you get into a conversation about how do you weigh the cost of movement versus the the gain of movement. I think it would just depend on what your goals are. Mm-hmm. So, like, let's say, uh, well, in, in my example, I want to serve as many people as possible by getting them adjusted and helping them get adjusted and implement chiropractic into their lives in as efficient and seamless of a way as humanly possible. Um, so as I'm doing that, like, one thing we did just, uh, like, even that was on my list – Uh, a few weeks ago was launch our gift of health program, which is a holiday promotion inside the office to do that, to even launch it on December one, I had to create on Vistaprint, the holiday cards and the gift cards. And then I had to order them, had to buy them. Um, There's all that. Now, if it's deciding if that's on my list and then let's say we have plans or, Brantley has hockey. I don't know. I'm completely making stuff up. And now it's late at night. I didn't get that thing done yet. I'm going to go to bed after we get Brantley off the ice to eat, um, get ready for bed, go to bed. And maybe I'm not able to watch his practice, but I have to get that done. I think no matter what it is, I think it all depends on what your goals are. (laughs) It all just depends on what your goals are. And then you're just going to have to, I think everyone's going to have to weigh it individually to what their, what their situations are. Mm-hmm. But, um, I guess like where, where my mind's at with this point of conversation is like, let's say you've got your list and you have your f- five things that are unique to your life that you want to get done. But some of them are going to cost a lot. Or maybe not. Or maybe it's an unknown cost that you're about to determine and say it's more than what you had thought. I mean, at what point, if there is a point, do those goals become removed from the list? Do they become removed from the list based on what it would cost you to accomplish them? Is there like a point of break even where you say, I I don't know. No clue, man. No clue. (laughs) I don't know. I I feel like. I think I think people could come up with examples where, yeah, that shouldn't be your goal based upon your situation of life mm-hmm. or, or some people not. Some people are more ruthless. Like we know so many online people or mentors or Grant Cardone's or, or Gary's. Do the hustle, uh, don't hang out with your friends from 20 to 30 and, and just work on that. And that that's going to cost a lot right. in social equity and all that. Um, family time, right. right? Like if you if you hustle and are trying to build a business as big as you can early in life and have young kids like we do, then you'll be a little more absent during this season. And then in the seasons, let's say they're 10 and up, when they also remember more, then you'll be there. Some people see that as more valuable. So I, I think when we start doing... So it's that, like goal evaluation. Yeah, yeah. What's and, really the top priority? And what it's always going to come back down to your personal values and morals because mm-hmm. I know like even couple of my friends who even own chiropractic businesses, ours aren't the same. So they'll do stuff that I'm not willing to do and vice versa, mm. just because that's where we land on our own values and morals. And uh, I don't see anything wrong with either. I mean, I'm, sh- I'm sure some could be argued better or yay or nay, but yeah, that's the best I got on that one. But yeah. that's true. Like you're you're going to have to, you're going to have to weigh the, the costs for sure. Whatever those goals are. I mean, even take fitness goals. Yeah. That's going to cost energy. You're going to be tired. Let's say you worked a 12-hour day, mm-hmm. and on your list you had workout for 45 minutes, or you were doing the 75 hard program. You woke up early. You did a workout then. You just worked a 12-hour day, and now you got to go home. You still got a workout to do, mm-hmm. and you have kids, right? Yeah. That happened with me a few times, and so I literally got my second workout done outside. I pulled the uh, elliptical out of the garage, just right outside <laughs> the garage, so I was outside. And did my elliptical for 45 minutes at, there was multiple times, it was midnight, one, two. Mm. But I got it done. And some people are like, well, you're going to be tired the next day. You're right. And I want to do it. That's my goal. My goal is to gain the discipline. Like, that was my goal is to be disciplined. Mm. So I valued 
doing my list more than sleep. <laughs> yeah, that night. That night. And it was one night. Right. And yes, over the course of those 58 days, um, there was a handful yeah. that that happened with less than six. Right. Because so you couldn't do that every pi- night. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. take the big picture, just like what you were saying. Y- you, it's the big picture. Sure, you might hit the pothole once, but in the course of a year, that it was just a quick thing. Mm. Sure, it sucks in the moment, but yeah. And the whole point of that, a big point of that program, seventy five hard, was it taught you discipline, right? So it's seventy five days mm-hmm. doing this, but then it's. I don't necessarily know that two workouts a day, 45 minutes each for the rest of your life is appropriately sustainable based on the phase you're in. But if it taught you discipline, so after that 75 hard, you instilled some different principles to reach a different goal. That's, that's kind of the point, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. I never finished. So when, when I, when I woke up on day 59 and realized I failed after that, like fully set in, cause that sucks. Like I'm like, Wow, only 15, well, 16 more days. And then I pulled open my app um, to take a progress picture. And it uh, he has like, hey, you forgot to do this. Did you miss that? You have to check yes or no. If you check no, I think there was another uh, thing that popped up. was like, are you lying to yourself and because you don't want to start over? Or, or did you actually do it and just simply forget to do it? And like, so he has a couple checks in there, which I really appreciate. I was like, that's cool. Um, but anyway, back to your question, you get in the discipline, like you're right. I'm like, I don't, I don't need, I don't need nor really want two workouts a day. Not really. Like I don't want two workouts a day, even once a day, like, especially with building a business in the stage it is right now. And my kid, like the, I maybe not right. Like I think five out of the seven days a week, that's, that's more what I would like, which in some case, some people are still like, what the heck? Five out of seven, you know, but it just is what it is. Um, but instead of that second workout during that time, I also realized more days than not, probably nine out of 10, I wasn't doing my Bible reading that I wanted to do. So in the same breath of me being pissed, I failed. I also got really happy because I'm, I reevaluated the entire program, looked through the app, saw like even changes on my progress pictures. I'm like, cool. I even hit the goals. I saw my abs again. Wonderful. Those suckers been hidden for a while, yo, (laughs) but and I was like, I'm right now switching that second workout in for an hour of Bible time every day and vice versa for a few other things. Less stringent on the diet, not saying I'm eating sugar and candy all the time like I have been today with the Tootsie Rolls. But, <laughs> um, I mean, I had a pizza every other week. And I mean pizza. I mean, I ate the pizza. I didn't have a sliced pizza. I mean, I ate the pizza. High carb day. Well, so the goal, <laughs> the goal of 75 pizza. hard is learning discipline. Yes. Yeah. Setting a goal, figuring out how to get there, learning discipline, and instilling the things, the checks in your life to get it. Done. And hitting the goal. Hitting yeah. the goal. Yeah, because yeah, a lot of people think it's just a body challenge, uh, a body transformation uh, uh, program, and that's not the point at all. Will you change your body both in both internally and out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you cannot do that work and not transform, well, you. Yeah. You can't. It if you powerful. didn't. Right. And well, it did. I mean, it really is. Yeah. And then you can talk with people. Yeah, I finished it. But you can talk with them for five minutes, ask them questions, stuff like that. And you know if they did or did not, or if they stopped, or if they like, well, well I changed it to me, or or you'll just you'll just know. Like you you know right. you have this instinct. You're like you did you did you didn't do it. Mm-hmm. That's all right. You just didn't do it. Just don't lie about it. Just say you didn't do it. Discipline equals freedom. Yeah, I, I'm on board with anything that teaches you discipline in order to. I feel like Jocko would like that quote. It is this quote equals freedom. <laughs> Jocko, yeah. <laughs> There's a I, I like those guys. I like Jocko. I like uh, I like Rogan. I like they're just mentally tough, Cameron, disciplined guys. Cameron Haynes, do you know him? Uh, Been hanging out with Rogan a lot, the bow hunter. Yes, correct. Rogan Rogan has a popular clip about uh, he gets on this one. He, it's his guest, and I don't. He he was he was kind of ragging on her. Because she was saying that sometimes you're just so exhausted that you just like can't drag yourself drag drag yourself through a workout, and he's like, "Yes, you can." Yeah. Immediately <laughs> was like, yep. "Yes, you can." See, I like Which, when he does that. I love when he does that because that's that's real. That's someone going actually check yourself. You got you have more in you than you know. 
And it's someone who's not willing to take any excuse yes. either. Like, yes. Can you get up and can you walk to the fridge? Can, mm. can you walk around your house and walk to the fridge? And this gal was like, well, yeah. And then you can drag yourself through a workout, get a kettlebell, throw it around for a little while. And, and that kind of, I felt my mind resist the yeah. thought because I know there have been days where it's like I am just done and I feel like the thing that I need is to lay on the couch. But that's, that's, a, that's a lie. I mean, that's me giving in under what I'm feeling. That's me just being like, and I don't know where I learned that. This goes back a little bit to the to the fear part. Is that's a that was a learned response on my part somehow. Yeah. Where I felt I am just done for the day. I need to go sit. Not necessarily. Switch it. What if you actually did? What if what if physiologically you did, but your goal is to work out that day? You wouldn't have felt great about yourself the next morning if you didn't drag yourself through the workout. Right. Right. But I, then it either way same point still dra- <laughs> There's more in you. you. You can. And I think that's the thing that I would love for the majority, for everyone to just grab onto, is that there's more in you than what you think there is. And I think that the human body and the mind proves that over mm-hmm. and over again when you think about what SEALs go through, through Hell Week, when they're just driven to the breaking point and what a lot of military trainings do and what, I mean, the 75 hard. It, that sounds hard. I doubt myself thinking that I could get through it, but if you can teach yourself the discipline and just commit to the thing that you want. Like you can make yourself do some pretty incredible things. And so, Oh man. I mean, it's, that's, that's true. But people, people need, people don't need the support around them. But like, think of anything, even the things that are explained, like kids survive or millions of people surviving terminal diseases. No, no, you will die. And they don't. They change their life. They change their mind. They change their body. They change everything. Like, um, like that's actually something. Like, we'll have some pretty sick people start in our office. Whether that's, um, just found out they had cancer. Whether that's a, a few autoimmune diseases and a big conversation. Um, because you can tell when people have hope and people do not. And the thing I say before they leave on that first day and on the second day and a lot of the days, is. I, I stop them and make sure that they hear me say, you have to have hope. You have to know you, in, you have enough to heal you fully in your body right now. We just got to get it. We got to unlock it. We got to make things happen. Yes, we're going to do stuff in this clinic. There's also going to be a lot of lifestyle things you're going to have to do. It's going to be really hard. It's going to be really hard, but this isn't easy. Having a life you want is not easy, right? Like there's, there's a, a Steve, do you know Steve Weatherford? He's another, uh, um, mm. he was a, punter or kicker for the New York Giants when he won the Super Bowl. Not He was like the fittest man in the NFL or something. Cool dude. Man of faith. Really cool. Um, really cool dude. I signed up for his text. But he read something. I actually, I think I think this is going to be valuable enough to read. How much time do we have? We're about to wrap up. All right. I'm going to find it then quick. Hopefully it's Hopefully it's quick. Maybe keep chatting I mean, as I find it. Anybody else? Like, we, we, we talk, we refer to Rogan, we refer to Jocko, we refer to Steven Rinella, Cameron Haynes was just thrown out. Is there anyone else kind of on your list right now? David Schroeder. Not, not, well, yeah, always, mm-hmm. always him. I mean, in, in the, I don't know, discipline, motivation sphere, that would be the majority of it. Yeah. I mean, I don't know. The gospel is pretty motivating in it and is. of itself. So, yeah. Any gospel-based message mm-hmm. tends to get me a little riled up in a good way. It's just, yeah. It's about it's about life being hard, and I'm still trying to find it. He sent a lot of texts. <laughs> but, um... Go, don't even... Come well, on. You, you know, have a search bar at the top of your messages app? I, I do. You do. I sure do. I sure, I sure, I sure do. <laughs> you just search life hard. Well, you know, something I've kind of been stewing on the thought of through this part of the conversation has been just like the need for purpose. And I feel like that's something Ken has, Dr. Mm -hmm. Ken has in different spheres, different times, different moments. We talked about the season. uh, Was it 70 days or 75? 75. 75 hard is what it's called. Mm -hmm. So like even through that, it's like you in that had a purpose to develop discipline. And so knowing that enabled you to push 
through the difficult things. And mm-hmm. but I mean, I even think in all of this, you know, optimistic, believing you can, um, discipline. I think it all has to go along with purpose. Otherwise, I mean, you're just I don't know living a real difficult kind of life without reason. And I even think it goes along with deciding, you know, at what cost is this worth it? I mean, I think that goes back to a purpose question. Ultimately, what's my purpose Yeah. in this time for this area? I feel like that question is also like, what are you most passionate about? I feel like that would almost be the same. They go pretty close you together. Know? And and I, I still don't know how to answer that, but... um. But I do know that diving through scripture and realizing who who I am because of whose I am, it, and I know that cute statement, whatever. But like <laughs> that's that's very real, and that's uh when you can understand what you've already got and who you are, and who you who you're declared to be, the victory you have, the anointing you have, the the blessing you have, it that that changes everything if you grab it, mm-hmm. if you hold it. Um, I found it. Can I read this? Is this too long? Go for it, man. Okay. It says, choose your hard. Being your best is hard. Being your normal is hard. Making wise decisions is hard. Making bad decisions is hard. Being in shape is hard. Being out of shape is hard. Losing weight is hard. Being fat is hard. Working out is hard. Being weak is hard. Being disciplined is hard. Being lazy is hard. Getting out of your comfort zone is hard. Staying in your comfort zone is hard. Starting a business is hard. Working for someone else is hard. Making a lot of money is hard. Making a little bit of money is hard. Being rich is hard. Being poor is hard. Having great relationships is hard. Having bad relationships is hard. Having friends is hard. Having no friends is hard. Fighting for your marriage is hard. Divorce is hard. Having a lot of things is hard. Having nothing is hard. Living on purpose is hard. Living off purpose is hard. Doing life's God way. Doing life God's way is hard. Doing life your own way is hard. Everything is hard. Choose your hard. Screenshot. So I don't lose that again. <laughs> I'm a big I'm a big fan and I think that's a great way to try to wrap up what we're talking about too is the day to day is not easy and what we're talking about in this discipline mindset is just a way to get through today, get into tomorrow well and not just limp on by, you know. Amen. Do you have any like summary of that? Yeah, I've I've just had the thought a lot in myself recently, like do the hard thing right now so that you don't have to do the hard thing later. Like Dave you, Ramsey says something about he catches a lot of slack. I get it. And yeah. whether you're for him or against him, do not care. But he says do or something like you know what live, I don't even live like no one else so later you can live like no one else. Yeah. I think that's, that's it. Exa- that's mm-hmm. exactly it. I mean, even uh, a guy that comes to mind in all this talk is also David Goggins. <laughs> yeah. He's a hard dude. He's a hard dude. <laughs> yep. He's yeah. a hard dude. And I struggle with David because, and oh, I can't go there. It's fine. And I can't another go time? There with him. Maybe another time? Yeah. You have to, off camera, we can talk about David Goggins. But sure. the, he has the, another, he has a podcast with Joe Rogan. Yeah. I haven't listened to that He one. has a lot of material, too. And yeah. I think it's all well-meaning and just, like, encouraging and, like, get stuff done. Go yeah. live a life. Go do something while you're here. Mm-hmm. And I'm, I'm on board with that. Yeah. You know, I would rather do something significant or, or do something to enjoy life to the fullest now. Choose your hard. Do the hard now so that you can live well. I always heard it. It was uh, live like a poplar now so you can live like a prince later. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Don't just go spending all the money once yeah. you get it. And then to let it be gone, like store it up. Yeah. You actually just said some, I just heard uh, a quote by Jeff Bezos who said something very similar like, like that. I, th- I actually think I put it on my Instagram story a couple days ago, but I don't remember it now, but I'll, I'm going to find the quote after this and maybe you can put that in the, some footnote or something. And by the way, if, if anyone wants the, the link or that picture of choose your hard, um, yeah, we'll make it available. They can reach out to you. I'll For sure. To you post it right along next to this podcast but interesting topics i'm really excited to keep digging into things like this and you know going through maybe a program like 75 hard i don't know if you're like yeah let's do it 
I know the two time a day workout thing. That's not necessarily culture for a lot of people around here. That wasn't really like (laughs) what I was coming away thinking. (laughs) Sure, you know. (laughs) Yeah, that sounds like uh, fun. Lindsay just nodded her head yes. Or was that a sideways? That was a straight up no. She was (laughs) laughing at me. It was like well, because I'm right there with you. I was (laughs) like, like, no, forty five minute workout twice a day. That is not hour and a half to do that. Yeah. (laughs) I'll try to drink more water if that's what you want, but that's what I want, man. Yeah, you drink, you you yeah, easily drink more a gallon water of coffee than coffee. A day. This is full of water right now. More water yes. than coffee, Very Isaac. Good. That's it. <laughs> Maybe, uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's keep talking about programs and things, things that we can do because I I am super into this and I want to be a high achiever and I want to help other people be a high achiever. But yeah, you know, I, I want to help people learn through what I'm experiencing, and what other people are experiencing, and so you have done that for us today. Mm-hmm. Through what you've experienced, I think you brought a perspective that uh, will have value for people getting things done, yeah. being disciplined. So well, I appreciate that. Yeah, super excited, and it's been fun. That's been another been fun, fun one. Right on. Thanks, Doctor Ken. Thank you for having me. Right on, indeed. Unfiltered episode twenty. He's Isaac. It's Philip. Till next time. Thanks for being with us. <laughs>